I take untreated alcoholism very seriously. I think we're sitting in the rooms of AA dying of it. I mean, if you don't know where your big book is, if you haven't read your big book, if you're not sponsoring, if you're not doing an active tenth step, if you haven't done a fourth step in a long, long time, you're probably suffering some, some part. And I told God I did not want to be the one to share this message, by the way. Because, see, my popularity is going to drop quickly right here. And uh, all of a sudden, I was the fun, cute one, and now she's kind of bugging me. But the truth of the matter is, is my husband, who was not going to die of this brain tumor, at first they thought he was going to die, then they go in there, he has massive brain damage, he's never going to work again, he's got about the mind of about a 16-year-old, but I love him. You know, and I, this is, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. That's the kind of gal I am. And uh, he ends up dying of a heroin overdose. Yep. And you know what? It wasn't the brain tumor. I wanted to believe that forever. We were in untreated alcoholism. He had absolutely no mental defense. He couldn't handle it. And I almost gave it up. 17 years sober, the obsession came back for me. I'm telling you what, you know what? Pride can keep you sober for a while. How many people in this room know what I'm talking about? You bet your ass. Charlie said to me one time, I said, Charlie, I want to drink. And you know what he said? He said, don't drink without me. And I thought, oh, that's so stupid. <laughs> but I tell you, I thought, okay, I won't. Oh, man, you can white knuckle it for so long. And Mark Houston fell into our world and Chris Raymer. And I'm telling you what, I didn't like either one of them when I first met him. I didn't like him at all. I had 17 years. You can't tell me anything. You know what I'm saying? And I thought, I don't know who this guy is. I kept turning him off and turning him off and turning him off on the CD. And Charlie goes, oh, for God's sakes, can we listen to the man? <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. I went back to my meeting. I was going to five meetings a week. That curtain was pulled back. And there was not one bit of AA talked in that meeting. You know why? Because I had to be at a meeting where there was no AA talked at. When you don't work a program, you darn sure don't want to go to a big book study. <laughs> no, thank you. I want to just talk about whatever I want to talk about. You know, when the book says we're always in collision with something or somebody, that was my meeting. You could say it never grew. There was only 15 of us. It stayed 15. You came in. We were so toxic. Right? We're always in collision with something or somebody. And, I mean, that's what we did. And then all of a sudden we stumble into Mark Houston's big book study, and I kid you not, I remember Charlie going, good God, what book is he reading out of? I go, I don't know. I've never heard it. I have never heard it. I am shocked. And I don't like him either. And they send us back to our room, right? And Charlie's doing the evening review because he's such a suck-up, right? You know, and he goes, he goes, aren't you going to do the evening review? And I went, absolutely not. That is ridiculous. You know, and I come back in there, and I remember I took Mark off, and I'll never forget this. If you knew Mark well, you knew this laugh. He goes, ha, 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 And I told him something that was very serious, and he did that laugh. And I thought, oh, I really don't like you now. <laughs> I mean to tell you, I am so grateful for those two men. They, they literally pulled me, and I'm not, a, I'm not an easy one. I am a very tough bird. I got so much pride. I told you, you know, I left home at 15. I finished school. I am tough, tough, tough. And those two boys pulled me out. God sent them to me knowing that that's how hard-headed I am. And they pulled me out. And I got to tell you guys today, I work a AA program like you wouldn't believe. And as a matter of fact, when I know it's getting tough and I got that inner feeling of, of it just ain't right, I can't really figure out what's going on and I'm sick of looking at it, I throw myself so knee-deep into working with others. I probably sponsor 25 gals, man. I'm calling them. They're calling me. I don't miss a phone call because that seems to work when nothing else does. You know, the book says that. It says it works when nothing else does. You know what nothing else is? Calling my sponsor, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> right? Doing an inventory on it. Kind of, sort of see it. Yeah. Uh, he's still bugging me. Okay. Right? I mean, all these things, I go, I, I'm, not getting, I'm not getting through it, man. I'm either self-righteous or self-pity. I flip between the two. And, uh, I mean, it's terrible. It's terrible, terrible, terrible. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know that level of mental obsession behind whatever. Oh, my God. And so 
I, I know I'm out of time, but I just want to tell you guys that I, I'm so looking forward to how all three of us work together this weekend. I do hope you vote for me. <laughs>